Don't worry, villagers, for I shall unmask the fox spirits tonight at the Lord Magistrate's home. And so he took Lady Kitsune to her parents, the Lord Magistrate. And so he took Lady Kitsune to her parents, the Lord Magistrate, a boisterous man was quite happy to see his daughter again. And they embraced their daughter and laughed and chuckled merrily. And for your good deed, Lord Samurai, I shall have a grand feast tonight in your honor. Lord Tuku chuckled silently to himself. And at that banquet he said, Lords and ladies, and all of you peasants. Today is supposed to be a day of rejoicing, for I have found Lady Kitsune. But the rejoice is false, for this is not your daughter, but a fox spirit in disguise. The crowd gasped. <gasps> and the Lord Toku took Lady Kitsune by the arm forcibly pulled her in front of everyone in the audience. He undid the pins in her hair and ruffled through them to find her ears, but could not find them. He lifted up her skirt to show where the tail would be, but was left embarrassed. Lady Kitsune turned red with embarrassment herself, and the magistrate grew angry, for he was embarrassing his daughter and his family. This was no honorable conduct for a samurai. Lord Tuku got angry too. Show yourself, fox spirit! I saw your foxy parts! I saw how you hid them! Reveal them to me! Lord Toku, I don't know what you're talking about, pled Lady Kitsune. Lord Toku said, fine, if you shall not tell me the truth, I must strike you down. And with one swift swing, he drew his sword and sliced Lady Kitsune in half. She fell dead upon the floor, her blood everywhere. Now that she is dead, she will turn back into a fox. Everyone watched. Everyone stared at Lady Kitsune's body. But nothing happened. Lady Kitsune did not turn back into a fox. Her hands did not become paws. A tail did not appear on her rump. And where were her ears? Lord Toku! You have killed my daughter, and for that I will have your head, howled the magistrate. Lord Toku started pleading for his life. Oh no, it was a mistake, I swear. I saw she was a fox. And eventually they caused such a commotion, the magistrate calling for his head, and Lord Toku pleading for his life, that the monks at the temple next door could no longer sit in meditation. And the head monk came to the feast, and he said, hmm, Lord Magistrate, what is all this commotion? I hear that your daughter comes home safely at the arms of Lord Toku, but now she is here dead on your floor. Lord Toku's sword still stained with her blood. What has happened here? The magistrate told the tale to the old monk. And then the monk asked for Lord Toku's side of the story, as a wise monk would. Lord magistrate, said the monk. Lord Toku was simply trying to do his duty. It is a case of mistaken identity. At the same time, Lord Toku acted brashly. 
if your magistrate would understand. As penance for his crimes, as I believe him to be truly sorry, I shall take him as a monk into our order. The magistrate thought about it for a while and thought, You would do this, Lord Toku? You would put away your violent sides, set your sword down for good, and shave your head to spare your life? Lord Toku pleaded, Yes, yes, magistrate, I will. And I shall become the best monk that ever there was. So, before everyone at the feast, the monk took the vows of Lord Toku and made him a brother of their order. And Lord Toku sobbed with every stroke of the knife that cut the hair from his head until at last his head was completely shaven and his beautiful hair laid upon heaps on the floor cried and sobbed, but at least he had his life. And when at last he had no more tears to shed over the loss of his hair, he looked up and saw the old monk laughing. Not only was the old monk laughing, but the magistrate was laughing too. And all the peasants. And even Lady Kitsune. She was not dead. Nor was her dress stained in blood. She stood above them as all of them did, and they laughed and laughed at him. Until eventually, all their foxy ears showed up. Lord Toku left in disgrace. For that moment on, all that saw Lord Toku knew that he was bested by the foxes. For all they need do is look upon his bald head. That was the story of Lord Toku and the foxes. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you know the moral. Do not let pride, vanity, or anger get in the way of rational decision. And if you ever meet a fox, better let them be.